How does the Russian passenger car industry work under Western sanctions? What results did he achieve and what losses did he suffer in 2022? And what can he expect from Russian car manufacturers in 2023? Through the efforts of the Russian authorities over the past 19 years, the Russian passenger car industry has ceased to be Russian. The share of passenger cars produced by factories operating in Russia controlled by foreign owners has long become overwhelming. But in 2022 everything has changed. And yet, before talking about these changes let's see which of the passenger car manufacturers held what positions in pre-war Russia. Let's go in ascending order. For ease of perception, the final results will be rounded. The Mercedes-Benz plant, which opened in 2019 near Moscow, produced almost 10,000 cars in 2020 and more than 17,000 cars in 2021. The plant of the Chinese company Havel, built in the city of Tula, was also opened in 2019 and in 2021 was also at the stage of increasing production, having produced almost 40,000 crossovers against 14.5 thousand in 2020. As far back as last February, the management of the plant announced that it had reached its design capacity, which allows the production of 80,000 cars a year. Stamping, welding, painting and assembly production have been set up at the Russian plant, but it has not yet been reported whether the construction of the engine plant, previously scheduled for the end of 2022, has been completed. Most of the factories by foreign manufacturers, which began working in Russia before the two above, in 2020 and 2021, due to the COVID epidemic that swept the world and the numerous production and logistics problems associated with it, there was a decline in car production. Therefore, further, in order to show a more objective picture, I will provide data for them from a more successful 2019. The Solars plant located in Vladivostok assembled almost 33,000 Mazda cars in 2019. The Zmarus plant in Kaluga of the Stellantis concern has manufactured more than 40,000 passenger cars, crossovers, minivans and small tonnage vehicles of Citroën, Peugeot, Opel and Mitsubishi brands. Almost 42,000 off-road vehicles and small tonnage vehicles came out of the gates of the Alianovsk automobile plant which is also part of the Solars company. More than 52,000 Nissan cars were manufactured at the plant in St. Petersburg. They made popular in Russia models X Trail, Murano and Kashti. The Gorky automobile plant, in one of its specially equipped workshops under a contract with Volkswagen, assembled more than 64,000 Skoda cars of various models. The Russian Toyota plant, which has been operating for 15 years in the Shushri industrial zone near the city of St. Petersburg, produced nearly 75,000 cars in 2019. Interestingly, in 2021, unlike most competitors, he managed to increase the production of cars, having manufactured about 80,000 Camry sedans and RAV4 SUVs. In Moscow, at the former Avtoframos plant of Renault, and now the Moskvich plant under the Renault and Nissan brands, 100,000 cars and crossovers were manufactured in 2019, and in 2021, despite all the problems due to the COVID epidemic, they the output grew to almost 145,000. The Volkswagen plant in the city of Kaluga at the end of 2019 reported on 151.5 thousand manufactured Volkswagen Polo and Skoda Rapid. The Avto Turkaliningrad multi-brand plant, which assembles a whole assortment of models of various brands with varying degrees of localization, ended 2019 with a total result of just over 212,000 cars and crossovers. The Hyundai Motors plant in ST. Petersburg, which produces passenger cars under the Hyundai and Kia brands, produced 245,000 cars in 2019, probably being the only one that was able to fully load its existing production capacity. And finally, the flagship of the Russian automotive industry, the Renault-controlled Avtovaz company, here I combined the results of two of its plants that produce cars under the Lada brand in the cities of Tilyati and Izovsk. So, in 2019, these two plants produced a total of 483,000 cars. Let me clarify that these are not only lobbies. Renault and Datsun cars were also assembled in Togliati. In total, all Russian passenger car plants produced just over 1.5 million vehicles in 2019, which accounted for the vast majority of the total number of 1,750,000 passenger cars and light commercial vehicles sold that year. 
For comparison, the total number of cars and light vehicles sold in the country in 2021 amounted to approximately 1,660,000. The final result of 2022 at the time of preparation of this material has not yet been summed up, but it is unlikely to exceed 700,000 cars. That's it. The past year 2022 has greatly thinned out the number of car factories operating in Russia. During the past year, the Zmaros and Volkswagen plants in Kaluga were closed, and both are sincerely sorry, since they had a high localization of production. In addition to welding and painting bodies, the same Volkswagen by the beginning of 2021 acquired 65 local suppliers that provided it with 5.5 thousand different components. In particular, he used Russian steel for stamping and gasoline engines manufactured in the same Kaluga with a working volume of 1.6 liters. Moreover, these engines were shipped for export. For example, in 2020, 18.5 thousand engines were exported from Kaluga to Volkswagen assembly sites in other countries. The Zmaros plant at the very end of 2021 also localized in Russia the production of an engine of a similar displacement, then only diesel. And he was also engaged in export, but not power units, but already finished cars, the annual volume of which in a few years was to reach 30,000. In March, Gorky Automobile plant stopped assembling Skoda cars, and Avtoter plant stopped assembling BMW cars. In September, the Avtoter plant produced the last Hyundai and Kia from the available stock of components. The ST. Petersburg plant of Toyota was mothballed, and Mercedes-Benz announced the cessation of production at its plant near Moscow and plans to sell it to one of its dealers. By the way, in November, the management of the Avtoter plant, without disclosing details, announced that it had managed to find other partners to continue the production of cars at its facilities. In 2023, Avtoter plans to produce at least 50,000 cars under three new brands. The assets of another car plant in ST. Petersburg, which was previously owned by Nissan, in October came under the control of the Russian company Nomi, and he himself under the control of Avtovaz with a very vague prospect of organizing the production of large class models under the Lauda brand. Let me remind you that back in May, the assets of the Avtovaz company itself, previously owned by the French Renault Group, went to the aforementioned Nomi. At the same time, the rights to the Renault Group plant in Moscow were transferred to the city government, which, with the technological support of Comos, organized the assembly of Chinese crossovers under the Moskvich brand. Moreover, in the process of this assembly, the welding, painting and assembly lines inherited from the previous owner are not involved, the production of Moskvich cars is still carried out by the SKD method, and the most primitive, that is, by screwing the suspension assembly to the assembly line produced in China, and then a again disassembled car power unit assembly, gas tank and wheels. As a result, the Chinese crossover model Jack JS4 miraculously turns into the Russian Moskvich car, which allows the city authorities to talk about the revival of the plant and the appearance of a new model in the ranks of domestic cars. Plans for 2023-2024 at the Moskvich plant are grandiose. In the coming year, he is going to produce 50,000 cars by the SKD method, of which 10,000 will be electric. The task is complicated by the fact that for the sale of such a significant number of cars, a large dealer network and service support are needed, which the Moskvich plant will have to form literally on the go. A separate question is who needs 10,000 electric vehicles in Russia? Because in 2021, only 2,200 of them were sold in Russia. The welding and painting lines at the plant are going to be launched at best in 2024, when the task was set to produce at least 100,000 Moskvich cars, 20,000 of which are with an electric engine. And how are things at the well-known sub and LCV manufacturer Alyanovsk Automobile Plant? As one of the leaders of the Solars company, which owns this plant, said in a December interview, with the fall of the Russian market for passenger cars and light commercial vehicles as a whole by more than 60%, sales and production of cars at the Alyanovsk automobile plant in 2022 will exceed 35,000, then there will be a reduction of no more than 15%. For reference. In 2021, about 40,000 cars of all models and types rolled off the assembly line of the Alyanovsk automobile plant. In November, the Alyanovsk automobile plant, the only one in Russia, showed a sales growth of 14%. 
which could be large, but the release is slowed down by forced import substitution, which requires both time and money. The Koreans also stopped their plant in ST. Petersburg last spring, but, unlike their European counterparts, they tried to avoid a complete curtailment of production until the last moment, after all, it was the second automaker in Russia in terms of the number of cars produced, having manufactured 234,000 Hyundai and Kia in 2021, of which 24,000 went for export. And the Koreans, in principle, managed to achieve their goal. In December, the company's management announced that the company was resuming production. True, only stamping, welding and painting of bodies and only for their subsequent shipment to an assembly plant in Kazakhstan. For reference, in 2021, this Kazakh plant produced about 25,000 cars of eight different models. Unfortunately, the Russian division of the Korean company did not wait for the permission of its Ministry of Industry and Trade to continue full-fledged automobile production, since it also needs to obtain permission from the United States. But, as you know, there is a way out of any situation, you just need to look for it. And the Koreans have found. By resuming the manufacture of bodies, they retain both the plant and, more importantly, professional workers and managers. It is very possible that Korean cars with Russian bodies will return to Russia through production in Kazakhstan. Manufacturer, Avtovaz, ceased to be French in 2022 and became Russian. Now it belongs to two Russian companies, Nomi and Rostec. The Avtovaz company at the plant in Todliati currently has two conveyors out of three. On one in June, the assembly of the grand family of cars was restored, on the other, the Neva Legend SUV has been made since July, and since August, the Neva Travel SUV. In total, in 2022, Avtovaz manufactured about 220,000 vehicles mainly of the three named brands, plus a certain number of Lada Largus, Lada Vesta, Renault Logan and Renault Sandero, which were produced from January until the stock was exhausted. In the spring of 2023, Avtovaz will launch the third assembly line, to which the assembly of the popular Lada Vesta family will be transferred from the plant in the city of Izovsk, and in the autumn the production of the Lada Largus station wagon will be restored. And if we are already talking about plans, at the end of 2024, the Lada Grant on the assembly line should be replaced by a new model of the B segment, created on a single Renault platform, and at the end of 2025, they are going to launch a new crossover on the Lada Vesta platform. In addition, in 2024, Izovsk should start producing an electric version of Lada Largus. How many cars does Avtovaz plan to produce in 2023? So far, she has not shared her plans, but said that as of January, the production capacity at the plant in Todliati has been brought to a level that allows the production of 500,000 cars annually. Well, how much will come out in the end, we'll see. Let's summarize what has been said. On the one hand, Russian car manufacturers found themselves in an unprecedentedly difficult situation caused by sanctions and restrictions from Western countries, on which they are all extremely dependent. On the other hand, the departure of many competitors from the market has opened unprecedented opportunities for Russian factories to increase their market share, increase output and expand their model range. But in order to realize these opportunities, Russian car manufacturers will have to solve the most difficult task. To organize in Russia or find partners in friendly countries to supply a huge number of components to conveyors. And this problem is gradually being solved.